everyone welcome back to my garden thank you so much for joining me today i will be going over several things in the garden it is summer here in southern california full blast hot hot days and the garden is just thriving um, there are some areas that need some attention definitely and i am itching to do that but at the moment, it's not the best time. It's best to wait till it's a little bit cooler to start moving plants around. But if you got to do it, do it. But aeoniums are dormant, so just be uh, aware of that and don't mess too much with them. Also, lay off of the water. Uh, don't overwater them because they are dormant. Um, here you're seeing several of my pots. Uh, I got to repot them before the heat. And that's a good thing because now they're established and they're able to take the heat. And that's what's going on with these baby coral aloes, which I will be popping into the ground um, further on in the season when it gets a little bit cooler, probably. But these can take the heat. This is the mama. And the mama's a little bit um, stressed, but she has a lot of new growth in the middle. But I think I will be moving her, too, because... It gets too hot in that, that area for her. I don't want her stressed all the time. Here you're looking at the Sahara Echeverias and uh, Agavoides and some Aloes and that Curly Jade. And all these are doing beautifully. They, they are just doing so good. But again, I'm being very careful with the water, not to overwater them because that's that's... I mean, it's better to underwater than to overwater. Definitely, you will see signs of them kind of puckering a little bit or pouting when they need water. So just give them water. But if uh, you overwater, there's no, no going back from that. They start to rot and you will lose these beauties. Look at this Myrtillo with its crest. It is doing gorgeous. Uh, my Dorothea aloe is just thriving. It was very stressed at the beginning of the season. Now it's doing great. It's very, it's like if it's getting a bunch of water. So mm. it's very um, green. This one turns red, the one here at the lower left corner. And of course the Sahara's again, beautiful. Curly Jade. And yeah, I'm just giving you a little overview here and I will be going over some tips and some other stuff I'm into since I'm not able to full blown garden outside. I have to incorporate the garden inside my home and bring some of that magic inside and that beauty. Um, uh, I wanted to show you my beautiful pearl bush. It is gorgeous. This one, when I bought it, I had no idea. I knew it was water-wise, but I didn't know how beautiful it was. Snipping a couple of these little branches for some arrangements inside is just gorgeous. My marigolds are doing wonderful. And um, are these marigolds or are they... Oh, I don't know. I confuse these. Marigolds and zinnias, whatever. My beautiful little flowers are gorgeous. These need water every day. And I wanted to tell you that um, I am in love with this basket. Thankfully, I bought two of these. And um, they are just like that plastic-like basket. It is all weather. So they're great as planters. I did align it with plastic. And they are just maintaining their beauty. I did puncture it from the bottom with some holes so it could drain. And yeah, just doing great. My bird bath. Even though it's not overflowing the way I wanted it to, it is still green and looking good. Here I had some issues with overwatering because some of these uh, aeoniums are very, very yellow and they have a little bit of chlorosis, I believe. And uh, I have to really coordinate with my hubby not to water my plants because I think it's getting too much water. Here you're looking at um, this gorgeous um, dwarf olive that I purchased and you just got before this um, actual photo you saw a glimpse of this beautiful pot I went ahead and potted it in this gorgeous pot I got two of these 
Um, I'm looking forward to incorporating these into the garden, but I wanted to get them started, plant whatever I'm gonna plant in here and let, the, let it, you know, kind of get used to my backyard. And um, it's doing great. It remained in the five gallon plastic um, bucket for a couple of weeks, but now it's in this pot and it looks gorgeous. This is a terracotta pot and it just has that Italy, old world, Mediterranean feel to it. Love it. And I went ahead and planted my juniper um, here. This is kind of like, this is one that I had in the front that I moved to the back that I put in another pot. The ones that are in the ground are triple the size of this one in green, gorgeous. But this one has been having a rough time, so I decided to buy it a beautiful pot. Maybe it'll perk up. I did do a little bit of cleaning. I didn't want to overcut it, but it might become a spiral. I'm not sure. But um, for now, it looks gorgeous in this pot. Here I'm showing you my little planter. I have been so disappointed with the cucumbers. Zero cucumbers this season. The leaf miner is having a ball with my veggies. And I did plant some baby carrots, which I will be showing you in the next photo. Um, look at how cute. I will be um, making these with some balsamic vinegar and just yumminess. Um, so I look forward to that. But this is, the, this, is, this is one plant. This is what it yielded. And hey, it's a novelty. Really, it's not cost effective to grow this stuff. You can go buy it way easier than watering it, you know, tending to it. It's yeah, you have to weigh the pros and the cons here of the whole gardening craze. Here is a banana pepper. It was infested with mealybug. I took it out of where it was, put it in a pot, cleaned it, and it seems to have gotten over that. So I'm going to be repotting it in another planter, a big planter, so hopefully it doesn't get infested again. But as you can see here, my, my ma mammoth portulacaria and my regular portulacaria are doing great. These are little cuttings that I took and they are thriving. Um, this one's going to my daughter's house. And um, if you watch my channel, you probably saw when I took this one out and cleaned it, this one again, has always had a theme for Millibug also, even though it's not watered that often. But now it was in the ground. Now I put it in pots, I split it into two pots and both pots are doing great. Um, we took care of the millibug and it looks like if it's getting ready to flower. All right, so here we have the, the gourds um, again infested with the leaf miner or some darn bug that's just eating the, the leaves. I'm showing you here a picture of the product that I used. Um, this is great. It does control it, but I have the, the powder one. I'm thinking of getting the liquid one because the powder one, it's kind of messy and then, you know, it kind of takes away from your plants because they're full of powder. Um, but it's doing good. One of the plants is looking a bit wilty, but I'm hoping this will be full of, they'll climb this trellis and, and um, hopefully I'll get some gourds. That'll be so exciting. And I thought that maybe these wouldn't be attacked by the insects, but... Darn insects, they're just like everywhere here in, in the back because of, again, I, I believe it's because of the hedge, which has a bunch of critters growing in them. But um, I might have to go out there and just shell out the cash to fumigate all those hedges and, and control um, the bugs, but we'll see. And here we're looking at the big planter. It is not doing fantastic. I mean, the cucumbers again, these were grown from seed. They are not really thriving. Um, they, they're not dying. Um, they were treated with the Captain Jacks and they had some leaf miner also, but it is what it is. We live and we learn. So next year I might have a different plan for this planter, but for now, this is the only sunflower that has survived and it is also being eaten by something, but Hopefully at least I'll get one big beautiful sunflower. Here I have some other little pots that I have in this area with my little uh, crested myrtillo and um, some beautiful aeoniums. And 
um, I just ha I have a dahlia and some gladiolas, some bulbs I pulled out. They're doing good. This is my Alluvia Procera, and this year has been the year where it has looked so gorgeous, so alive, lots of petals. I did put it in a pot and it loves it here. It is getting more water. So I think I'm getting the hang of this one. Um, this one goes dormant and it loses all those little leaves. But now in the summer, it is just thriving. It is green, it is growing, and it's a little bit treacherous because it's got a bunch of spines. So the best place for this one was a pot for me. And again, I have some more of my little dangers here in pots. And this is the direction I'm going here in the garden. This way I can control that none of my um, guests in my garden get hurt. Um, so here we have the Rita Apuntia. And I just posted a video uh, about this Rita. And she's doing great. My Agave Perii has been in several places. It got a little bit sad. I had put it in the ground. It didn't like where I put it. And it was looking like if it was getting too much water. So I went ahead and put it in a pot. And again, don't be scared to move your plants around several times until you find the correct spot because everything functions um, differently in certain areas of your garden. You have different little uh, ecosystems or areas that that are um, perfect for certain plants and for others they just don't like it so it's just some experimentation moving stuff around and and you'll get the gist of it here you're looking at the lemongrass with the gourds and oh, again I'm so excited hopefully these make it um, again if they don't well I'll find something to trellis up this thing that the insects don't eat but for now I'm going to try everything possible to keep these gourds alive and thriving and hopefully they grow all over this awesome trellis. My apuntias have been doing great this season plenty of fruit which is not ripe yet but we've had several harvests of pads we are harvesting these and storing them so that we can use them throughout the season the production has slowed down a bit now that we're in full force summer. But um, I love these apuntias. Again, delicious, nutritious, just awesome. My tomato plants in the front. My cherry tomatoes are always a, a, a hit. These um, orange ones are so delicious. They're, um, they're some that I'm trying to propagate again because my plants, again, they're being attacked in the front, but I'm trying everything possible to keep this yielding little tomatoes because I love them. I have them every day. My San Pedro cactus is just doing wonderfully. It has been spared from being cut, but that will be coming up because I really do want to start a bunch of little plants off of that plant. And here I have my little area where my awesome gardening uh, potting bench thingy. Um, and I have a little, little pots that will be going into the ground once this heat comes out and I rework my garden. And now I just wanted to show you a follow up on some of the things I've touched in the past videos. Here we have this um, crest that came out on my T-Rex aloe. And it's still doing good. It's not the prettiest crest ever, but it is very unusual to see this in a, in an aloe. I've never seen it. My little uh, fountain area, it is a waterless fountain. I just love it. It kind of looks like a Mediterranean little spot here. And um, the hummingbird aloes, Hesper aloes are doing great. Um, my other little uh, pot area, is doing good too. I have my um, Sansevieria, my starfish Sansevieria here, and um, also um, my Christmas cactus, which it's looking good actually. Um, it's a little bit um, dry from the ends, but it's actually doing better than what it was on the other side of my garden. Again, move your stuff around and find a spot. My devil's tongue cactus, it has a lot of new spines. It's gorgeous. These take forever to grow, but 
it is just a great little cactus to have in a pot. Again, you're getting a look here at the Christmas cactus and this is the area in the back. And I have several um, African um, candelabra euphorbias and I went ahead and placed these in the ground. I, I bought them and put them in pots at the beginning and now they are just thriving in the ground. They love the ground. And I believe some of these are gonna start sprouting their candelabra form pretty soon here. Maybe by next year I have several candelabra arms coming out, which is gonna be really exciting. I have a lot of um, sticks on fire and a lot of um, elephant bush, the portulacaria in this area. Love the, it loves it. This area used to get really hot, but since we did put a covering with some mesh, um, it's been getting, you know, dappled light and it loves it. Now I wanted to show you some other projects I've been into since it's been so hot. Again, I'm trying to stay busy and still incorporate the garden into my to-dos here. So here you're looking at my eucalyptus tree. I have featured this one in my garden several times and I have cut branches before to bring indoors for the holidays and decorate, but they crumble and it just drives me nuts because they're so beautiful. Um, so now I'm looking into preserving these branches and hopefully I can get them to last, you know, at least a year, two years um, where I can display them in my home for the holidays and after because they're just gorgeous. I am using this vegetable glycerin and you can go ahead and look there's tons of videos on how to preserve it's very simple um, how you dilute this with water with hot water and uh, just uh, put your clean your stems off and then put it in put them in the solution for a few weeks and uh, my daughter has this gumdrop eucalyptus and I took a branch and we're gonna try kind of a little experiment for now to see if it also preserves well in the glycerin. I've seen my type, the baby blue eucalyptus, do very well and it remains um, supple. And so far it's been like a week and a half and my eucalyptus is preserving really well. The gumdrop is having a little rougher time, but if we can preserve this, it's gonna be awesome because it's gorgeous. Now the silica gel crystals. Um, I purchased some of these too because I wanna see what I can preserve that I have in my garden with these where I could use them to maybe um, keep uh, the shape and the color and all that. Um, my husband got me for the 4th of July some sunflowers since mine are not yielding anything. And I did put them in there for like four days and this is what came out um they're very delicate still the petals do fall off but they're they're not crunchy they they if you you can use these in a in a wreath or whatever and i think they would do great um at least for the season and you can have these beautiful sunflowers if you preserve them in the silica but if you do leave them in too long um, they will lose all the petals so you have to find that sweet spot where you pull them out and also you might have to leave them there a little bit more, maybe on the surface of your silica to get that, because the center is very thick and you want it to really dry out. You don't want any fungus or anything to, to start uh, in the center of your sunflowers. Another thing I've been doing is starting my Halloween um, production. And um, this year I'm going to try to do like an enchanted castle feel in my home. And so I started sculpting these candles out of polymer clay. I am trying um, air dry clay. And I know about polymer clay already, I love it, but the air dry clay is a little trickier. So I'm having to practice with that and hopefully I'm gonna have a whole army of awesome enchanted candles this season. It's gonna be really exciting and it's keeping me busy and out of the heat. Another thing I'm doing is I'm trying to bring some of my rosemary in. I made some of these beautiful soaps that I love uh, with some aloe um, base and just 
sprinkling um, some rosemary from my garden into these soaps and it, they're just great a great experience um, also I like to put some eucalyptus oil and some rosemary oil in there or lavender and they are just a great thing to use um, for your skin and for your mind because they just give you this whole aromatherapy experience when you shower okay everyone i'll let you go this is um, the end of the video but i wanted to give you a sneak peek into my studio i've arranged it moved it around did other stuff i brought up um, another secretary that i refinished so i've been busy um, doing all kinds of stuff and just trying to stay out of trouble and resisting the urge to go into the garden and move stuff around but um, do what you got to do. Stay cool. Again, do not overwater your plants. Just monitor them and give them enough to survive. And then when fall comes, everything is going to be gorgeous and you can move stuff around. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful and inspiring to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments down below. And again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And I will talk to you guys later. Please stay um, happy and healthy wherever you are. And I will talk to you guys later.